Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy and today I'm going to start building a new project which is a hall table. Something a little bit different. It's going to be a floating hall table. That's right. It's not going to have any legs. It's going to be attached directly to the wall. It's going to have a curved front and a curved front apron and a single drawer about 48 inches long and about 13 inches deep. Today I'm going to start by building this which is the front apron for it. This is a bent lamination. Uh, I've got an opening for a single drawer. Today I'm going to show you how I make the form for this how I cut the, the wood to make the laminations for this and of course how I cut this big hole in it. So stick around, we got a lot of work to do. Well I need to start by laying out the first form that the bent lamination is going to go around. This piece of MDF is 49 inches wide. The total width of this piece is going to be 48 inches and it's going to be a 12 inch radius that goes around like this. So I need to lay all this out on this piece of MDF and uh, start cutting it out. I've got my trammel set up with my router and I've got a half inch straight cutting bit. I'm just going to cut this outside curve. Now that I've got those outside edges formed, I can go out and cut the rest of this out with the jigsaw. So I've got my master template here. I've marked it with an M. I also have a center line. And what I'm going to do with this as I'm just going to put it on here and get it as close up into that area I cut before as possible. Trace it out. Now that I've got that done, I can take my jigsaw, cut this one out, and I need to cut a total of seven more after this one here. So all the pieces that compromise the form have been cut out now, and I'm going to start to put them together to make one big form that's going to be about six inches tall. So I've got the master piece and one of the pieces I cut out from with the jigsaw underneath here. And you can see there's a center line here and I've marked the center line here. I just need to match that up and I want to make sure that there's overhang all the way on the front around this because I'm going to use this as the pattern to route this. Over here at the router table, I'll take the router fence off because that will give me plenty of room to maneuver this big piece around. I've got a three quarter inch pattern rounding bit with the bearing guide on the bottom and the template face down. So all I need to do is turn this on and pattern route around this and remove all this extra edge. That went pretty well. Uh, I just need to start adding all the layers up on this and this is going to be six inches thick by the time I get done with it. Well, here's the bending form. It's done. It's a full six inches tall, four feet long. Uh, it's big and it's heavy, uh, but this should be more than enough to, to, to bend the wood around it. So the apron height is only going to be five inches, but I want to start bending it at five and three quarters, maybe five and a half, and uh, give myself plenty of extra room on it. Well, I measured all the way around that bending form, and it's 64 inches end to end. I've got two cherry boards here. This is five quarter, this is four quarter. The bulk of the laminations are going to come out of this. The laminations are only going to be a sixteenth of an inch thick, and that's to get it around that 12 inch radius. I want to make sure that I can get it around that radius. So one or two slices are going to come out of this. This is going to be the face. Um, I've got more than enough right here to get that five and a half, five and three quarter inches I need. So I'm going to start milling this up in preparation to start cutting those laminations. I'm getting ready to slice those laminations off this board here. There's really no trick to resawing. You just have to make sure your bandsaw is set up properly. I'm not going to go into all the detail of that right now. You also need to make sure your blade is properly tensioned and that it's square to the table and also your fence is square to the table. Um, I put a mark right here so I can get these boards back the way they were and I'm going to make one pass and then go over to my thickness planer, plane it smooth, and keep going. I hope to get seven, maybe eight slices out of this. So 
So I ended up using nine boards. I got two out of the board I was going to use for the face and seven out of the thicker board. It is what it is. So when I stack all those together and put them like that, I am, well, between 5 eighths and 11 sixteenths, so that's 21 30 seconds. It doesn't really matter. That's plenty thick enough for what I need to do. So I'm going to start getting this stuff ready to be laminated to the form. Well, here's my stack of laminations, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the top piece. I'm not going to put this on yet. I'm going to get to that piece later. Well, I've mixed up some pre-catalyzed urea resin glue, and I'm going to be using that. So what I'm going to do is take this piece right here, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to apply some glue to that. Hopefully I've made enough of this glue. I always wonder. The reason I'm using urea resin glue instead of PVA is that when it dries, it dries very rigid and I don't want this piece to creep and I'm trying to minimize, if not completely eliminate, any spring back that there is on the piece and you will get that with PVA glue. So after I've got that on there, I can take this next piece, put it on there, line it up. I've got a center mark on there. Apply glue to this and just keep going until I get through all uh, what eight layers on this. I've got all the boards on and they're ready to be taken over to the uh, form. So let's do that now. Well here's the form. I mounted on a base. I put some packing tape around here and I've also put some packing tape on the front because I don't want that glue sticking to it. And I've got a center line marked here and I've also got a center line on the form. And I've also got somewhere, where do I put it? Oh yeah, a call that's going to go on the front of this. And this is the same thing, it's got tape on it. And that's just to help even out the pressure so it doesn't cause any problems with cracking the grain. So this is all glued up. It took about 15 minutes. Very uneventful. It went very well. Uh, there's that saying you can't have too many clamps. Well, I've got plenty of clamps. I wish I had more shorter clamps. These long, you know, parallel jaw clamps on the ends here, uh, they apply a lot of force, but they're just too long. I wish I had a bunch of 12 inch clamps. Anyways, so this glue has to cure at 70 degrees and it's about 64, 65 in my shop right now. So I'm going to clear off my assembly table and I'm going to slide this over there and I'm going to put an electric blanket on top of this. If I give this 12 hours at least, um, there shouldn't be any spring back. We'll find out later. All right, let's see how this did. Get it off the form. There we go. I've got the workpiece flush up against the other side. And this is the amount of spring back I got total off of both sides. So it looks like maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch, somewhere in that area. Uh, not too bad considering the size of the piece, so I'm pretty happy. So after I've got that one edge flat and square, I need to cut this to width. Now, I was shooting for five inches. Right now, I'm at five and a quarter. I'm going to cut this to five and a sixteenth just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room just in case. Uh, and I'm going to use the bandsaw to do it. It's really the only thing I can to use to, to do this. So I just need to turn this on and get going. So next I need to mark out for the drawer. And I just need to cut a big hole in this. So this is the area that needs to be cut out. And to do that, I'm going to use a router template. I need to make that template now. So I've got a quarter inch upcut spiral bit in my router and a 3 8 inch bushing. Now the drawer opening is 18 inches long by three and a half inches wide. So that means I need to make a jig that's got an opening of three and five eighths inch wide and 18 and an eighth inches long.
Let me explain what all this is. First of all, I put a piece of tape down in the center between the piece and the form itself, and that's to prevent that middle piece from flying around after I cut it free. Second thing is, I put this piece in the middle, and that's just because the router, I don't want it to get tippy while it's in there because it doesn't go all the way over to the other side, and that just gives it a nice solid platform to run around on. Now, I've also secured this to the side of the template, or to the side of the piece itself. This has got to go back later in the exact same spot, so number one. Number two, I didn't want to have to deal with any clamps or anything on the outside of this that the router could possibly interfere with. So, with all that being said, I need to cut this out. I'm probably going to do it in three, maybe four passes, but uh, I just need to be real careful and cut that middle piece out. Well, that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed how I made this. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. As always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.